Trying to get it all out of here. Okay, this is the Prairie Field Services Safety Meeting for the week of April 15th. Just trying to make sure we're broadcasting live here because I'm not seeing it again. So give me just a second to make sure it's going out here. Okay, we've got it going, Dana. All right, folks, this week we're talking about our alcohol, drug, and tobacco policies is what we need to talk about this week. And Yep, please kill your audio there. I appreciate it. <laughs> I got a little video for you to watch here. But we won't jump to the quiz. Going straight to the quiz. Heck yeah. We're going to jump to the quiz because you can't hear that out there, guys. <laughs> uh, we, we do have drug tests that you may be partaking in. There's the new hire. There's randoms. There's reasonable suspicions. And we do have all those all in place. And if you violate our drug-free workplace program, you could get what happened to you. You could be terminated. You could be referred to... Uh, Programs, uh, that sort of thing. And what are some of the signs of substance abuse? You guys have all Your seen them. <laughs> yep, that's it exactly. That's part of our reasonable <coughs> suspicious training for the supervisors. Well, remember, this is a drug-free workplace. We do do the pre-employment. And the randoms, post-incident, we do. Return to duty and follow-ups, there are those in there also that we can work with. Now, if you do have come up hot on a random that you get talked to on that, then you'll always have some follow-up testing on return back to duty if you complete the programs properly. Not necessarily. Right. There's program, you have to go through a whole entire program, counseling, all this long list of shit you have to do, and then you have to get on a, what's it called, SAV? Yeah, there's a program that you have to then follow that has other forms of testing that come up for you and all of that. Or something like that, and you're on the cottage for angels or something like that. It's going to depend on everything. Yeah, as long as you can prove to the testing doctor that does the test, if you're on prescription medication, that you have a current prescription that the doctor on your prescription authorized it for you, they uh, take care of those kind of things. Tobacco use, you know our policy. There's no smoking in prairie trucks. I uh, had an incident just last week where not only in front of the drivers, in front of a supervisor smoking in the trucks, getting out of the truck smoking. So, we cannot tolerate that, guys. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about our IVMS policy, because I know there's a lot of heartburn over this right now, but it's been in this for quite some time. And it gives us a way to keep drivers accountable for following the policies and procedures. And it's implemented to protect you, the equipment, the environment, and the company. And it applies to all CDL drivers and leasers. Also, 
that uh, corrective actions come out through these things. Every driver generating a valid alert is contacted and coached regarding this alert. That is a text message that you can read right there. It says respond to it when safe to do so. We will notify that. We're going to try to help you through those. If you don't feel they're right, you come up and see Brian Farr. He'll show you where they're uh, alerted. All of that. We monitor these by <coughs> leasers and company drivers. We will look at some of the harsh events to make sure they're valid or not. And we do communicate to you with those. So there's some of those other um, same processes. If you have three or more valid alerts in the work week, Sunday through Saturday, you can lose half your incentive pay. If you exceed six or more in a calendar month, you can get referred to for remedial training. And that's what we have going on right now with a whole bunch of drivers. Now, I have a question on that. What if you have faulty equipment? You know you have faulty equipment, and it's been brought to everybody's attention. It needs to be brought to you. Speedometers? And the equipment still is, nothing's been done about it. What, speedometers are way off? Yeah. Let's get it back in there. Tell them we need to get it fixed. Because we can also see what the engine speed is doing through the ECM, just not off your speedometer. So we have two ways to check that. Well, Ryan checked mine once. He tracked me. Yeah, it was three, four miles an hour faster than what I was showing. Yeah, it doesn't take him long to and fix I those. I was getting wake up alarms for days. <laughs> alerts. Yeah, get get with the shop. Write that up because it is a computer fix on those. And uh, no, tire size and all that can fix those. The ECM is usually pretty standard. It is pretty close to it. But here's the other things that Kim was talking about just now. If you attend our remedial drivers training and all of that, and then still continue to throw these alerts, you can be placed on six weeks probation. You'll have to come back through and do remedial training once again. And then during that probationary period, if you get more than one valid alert in a week, you can be suspended for one to three days with a warning letter. You won't be eligible for any incentive bonus during that probation period. And if they continue to generate more alerts, um, possible termination can happen. Our number of people, well, yes, we have quite a few, but when you look at the company drivers, we're fairly low. So there's a huge group of you all driving very, very well. You respond to the coaching you get, and it's taken care of. But let's try to pay attention to the speed limit. We're governed at 65. Leasers need to be traveling 65. Also, um, crew leads need to be driving the proper speed limits. doesn't matter. We have to follow these things. <coughs> because what are some of the reasons behind IVMS? We'll show you here. I can get my cursor to cooperate with me. You gotta love the lag with Bluetooth, I tell you what. To the right, to the right, up, up, oh. there you go, play. Oh. Ah. Ah. I'm sure you guys have seen this one, but if I can get my dang mouse to get where it needs to be. Three days later. There you go, play it, play it, fire. Because you know what happens with alerts. Uh, you have a poor driver's history, and you're involved in a collision that really injures somebody or a fatal or something like that. All of these things are pulled in and looked at by not only the DOT, but now if there's any kind of criminal penalty, they look at those also. They look at us on negligent retention. That why did you keep a driver such as this? What did you do to cry to correct their behaviors, all of that sort of thing. So it's very vital to you to make sure you keep these within limits because you don't want to be on the receiving end of one of those, especially in a civil trial. It can get really expensive really quick and what you thought you had now belongs to somebody else. So it behooves you to drive safely and that's all we want to uh, do is make sure you're driving safely, guys. 
Yeah, yeah when you're in doubt, doubt chain up. up. You know, it's, it's the, the mud season's on us, guys. We, we had some pretty, pretty major stuck trucks, trucks that are going to be huge tow bills that weren't chained. Put them on before you get into a bad situation. If you're stuck, you're stuck. Stop. You know, get out and walk the pad for four or five minutes and find the hazards. It could save you five plus hours waiting on a record. And we don't need that. There's more rain in our forecast coming up, so be aware. And it's supposed to be nice and decent, but cloudy in Texas. They've already had some of their rain come through. Texas is doing a fundraiser. We've done a bunch up there. They are supporting a, a way overcrowded animal shelter in Carlsbad, New Mexico. And they're doing some things. If you feel want to donate something, every dollar helps. A dollar or two we can send to them. Just to help out our team in Texas. You know, they, they've been working hard. They have got a very good positive attitude down there and a great backing from the Orla community, as small as it is, because they are trying to do things to help them out. So if we can help them out, let's do that. Their crew, they're still, you know, right about eight to 9,000 barrels a day. They have some fullback still planned for them for WPX, so those should start coming up some. Our Wyoming water, we had some bad days, but we've been doing a lot more service work, and a lot of this doesn't reflect the service work they're doing. Pulling tank bottoms, transferring water, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some of the wells that you guys are hauling, our water guys are right there trying to pull tank bottoms so you can actually get to them. And crude, we're averaging about 52 to 53,000 a day, which has been very, very, very good. We could always get some more. I know guys are worried about, oh my God, the bolt load board's way down and load way down. There's some things we were talking about that. Some wells didn't come on as they'd projected. Uh, when it got... Yeah, so those will come back up. Like when it was so muddy the other day, Devin just shut down all their travel. He said they did not want their lease roads screwed up. So our loads were down. You know, Samson, you've got a bunch of rejects out there because you're doing your job. You're checking it. Can I actually haul this oil? So... There's a lot of factors that play into that, but you guys are doing your job. Um, John wanted me to talk a little bit. The other day when it got really, really cold, a lot of brake freeze-ups out there. When do you empty the air on your trucks? Exactly. Before, at the start, into shifts, sometimes if it's really bad, you know, we know our air dryers are kind of lagging, especially when it's really cold. Yeah, try, try to, to dump, dump some of that if you can as we're uh, driving through the day. Just see if water comes out. If it does, drain her out. But John wanted to make sure you guys are at least dumping them at the end of your shift. Get rid of that water. The DVIRs, you guys are doing a lot better going through listing things wrong. If it's still wrong, keep <coughs> putting it on there. And they know they're lacking in the washing of trucks. Some of you guys have sent me pictures and all of that. Do you guys need the air stuff liquid to put in your... Yeah, if you guys didn't hear Kyle out there, if you need the airline dryer, they have it to drop in your or to drop inside there. They know they're lacking in trucks. Right now their day wash bay guy is out on workman's comp. We were hoping he'd be back this week, but he's still not. And they do have a night one, but they're pretty short staffed at night right now. They are gonna start getting on those. But think about some of the things we can be doing to help them. It's kind of hard. Yes, we could wash our own truck, but you guys are running hard. And right now, they got the, the sump is kind of backed up in there a little bit. So we want. Yeah, uh, good. Ryan, I got a question on that. Here a few months ago, Nick said that we could uh, run them down to the car wash. Possible. Is that still something we can do or no? Let me ask Nick, because I know the Gillette guys were going to a car wash up there in Gillette. And uh, unfortunately, the car wash had a fit with so much mud being left. They said, no, we don't want you guys coming back in. There is a truck wash right up the road here. Yeah, that's what yeah the one up there. Yeah. I'm sure we could do it. Uh, my screen for you guys froze up here, so I'll just talk about some of the operations notes for you. Um, some of our drivers in Cheyenne overheard one of the maintenance facilities that we have, and there's not many we work on down there, really bad mouth and prairie about 
you know, we're not this and we don't do this and we don't do that. They tried to talk to him and they didn't listen. So they reported that to Darren. Darren brings it up to the management. John and Darren went to this company and said, no, this was old staff that created this headache for you. <coughs> we will make sure you're done proper. And did some good work with them, tried to help them out with that sort of thing. If you hear that kind of thing, let your supervisor know. Because most of it's, you know, this person tells this person that this one and this one, and by the time it gets out, it's just way grandiose. <coughs> we want to try to nip some of that before it gets bad. This is the, along the lines of the wash bay in Bar None or that one in Douglas. If we can use that one, I'll check on that, Devin. But make sure your reflective stripes are actually really clear. Uh, your tail lights, that sort of things. DOT inspections that I've tossed up there, not necessarily meaning the law enforcement inspections, but they're coming. The weather's getting nice. They're going to be hitting it. Please grab your cab card book. Make sure everything's proper in date that you have the Sam Sarah card in there. You have at least eight blank logs. And double check the uh, annual inspection on your truck and trailer to make sure it's still current and valid. Following distance and mirrors I threw up there. If you've noticed, the uh, state flower is out on the highways already, the orange traffic cone. And we're getting towards the end of the school year. There's going to be more traffic. <coughs> Give yourself some extra following distance. Mirrors. We've had quite a few strikes of fences and cattle guards here recently of just not watching the mirrors. If you're on lease road, especially at night, turn on those lights so you can see what your trailer's doing. If you're turning any more than about three degrees off center, Get in those mirrors. See what the heck that trailer is doing back there. One of the biggest things we're seeing failed on the audit is guys not knowing the life-saving rules. If you don't know them, come in and see Sierra and I, or Kim. We'll give you a copy of them. You only need to know four of those 12. It was kind of embarrassing when Rich was here on the chill day and he asked who can give any. We had, what, one or two hands go up. I know some people don't like to talk, but we should know those four at least. And be very, very careful using the GPS instead of following the turn-by-turn -turn directions. I had a driver just the other day go down, one that we're not allowed on, it's posted, and it's cost us five grand for going down that road. Yeah, follow those turn-by-turns. We've had a lot of tablets back, brought back to Brian saying the GPS doesn't work. You have the turn-by-turns. You, you can use those. They will get you where you need to be. Did you guys hear what he said about the fine that we just got? This driver didn't like go driving down the road and wind up at the person's house or anything like that. He literally turned down the road, realized he was on the wrong one, and then turned around and got off. Less than what they say, it was like an eighth of a mile. He yeah. went onto this road. We just had to pay $5,000 because a guy took a wrong turn. Where is that road at? Davis Stanley. There's a big road. Sun Hills property. So it's not just, it's not like this guy was blatantly doing, you know, going out. That's why it's so important for you guys to watch this. There's a map down at dispatch that shows it where you're not supposed to go. Some of the other things that out of the Chesapeake quarterly or uh, safety meeting today, if you are going into any of the bird stip areas, you have to follow the rules to a T. You cannot be driving down Dickow, Flat Top, um, Antelope. Or the Bill Hall, Bill Hall after, six. after 6 p.m. or before 8 a.m., period. You cannot go down there unless you contact Chesapeake and they give you authorization and they're not going to do it. You have to go the alternate routes that take you in off of Walker Creek. The only well we have there is the Rankin. You also have to have the placard, the little windshield placard hanging in your truck. We got 25 more of them from Chesapeake today. They're in dispatch. Even if you're going in there during the approved times, you have to have that Chesapeake placard displayed in your windshield or they won't let you in because they know you've been through the training with that placard and it has the hours and everything listed on there. There's also great big signs. They're half a sheet of plywood painted up with the Chesapeake colors and everything that tell you you cannot travel these roads at these times. The other thing Chesapeake asked a little help from is... If you see trash on the lease roads, please pick it up. 
they partnered with um, Anschutz, and they got well over 40 bags of the lawn and leaf size bag, those great big yard waste bags of garbage off a of 16 mile lawn. So if you see stuff out, try to be a good steward and pick it up. One of the things that really, really bothered them, and I know we don't have a problem with our folks, but over four cases, empty beer bottles, whiskey bottles, crack pipes, you name it on the 16 mile road. So think about this stuff with other drivers out there that you might be encountering. Rig crews. Yeah, rig crews, you name it out there. So just be aware that there's a problem out there right now with that. So how these other folks are driving. John, you got anything for them today? We're having a lot of problems with the kingpins. Make sure you're inspecting that on your pre-checks and your post-checks. They're cracking right there next to the bushing. Um, it's all on the Hollands, not the joists. So if you're lucky enough to have a joist, you're fine. Watch your speed on those roads. Tearing up that suspension. That's killing us with those airbags <coughs> and the springs. That's what our big thing is. And draining your air tanks. We'll get a video thrown together for that to show you guys all how to do it and everything like that and add an alcohol to your trailer lines so that way we don't freeze up when it gets cold out. I know wrong time of the season to be giving a class, but it'll help us in the future. That's all I got. Well, Donna, anything at all? Um, we are still doing the payroll donation deduction for Jerry Bryan and his family. Um, this is the last week for it, so please, if you want to donate to payroll deduction, get it in to me, Sarah, um, or you can put it in the donation box in the driver's room. Um, we appreciate any help any of you can give. Kim? Well, Kyle? Stop hitting things. How about you guys online? Any questions out there? I <laughs> think you're going to be unreasonable. Yeah, stop killing too. 40 incidents last month. Yeah, 43 incidents last month. So let's watch our spills. As Kyle said, stop hitting things. Turn by turns. Yeah, don't worry. all the time at night. Oh, I watch follow my GPS and I got lost. You got turn by turn. Follow your turn by turn. That's why they're there. Okay? I know a guy that just started here not too long ago on nights and everything. He's been here a little, almost a year now. He's never followed GPS once. He's never been lost one time. He follows his turn by turn. It's not that hard, people. There's one guy turn by turn. They're wrong. They're off by about four months. If they're wrong, please let us know. Yeah, I wrote it down. So you need to like, tell us. Call dispatch. They will get it flagged and they'll get they'll get a supervisor out there and they'll get a supervisor out there driving the road to get it get it done. Because that's the biggest thing. If you if you get lost out there, you're not following oil. Now now you're not trying trying to be found. And you have to drop a load and then and that, that backs everything up. Follow your turbo turn. And on that, you can't use your trip odometer, that's what it's there for. You can't start three tenths of a mile into your and oh well it's off well you didn't start at point A so it, that's what those trip odometers are for and they work I've had a lot of incidents where dispatch sends me out because they say these are wrong I took the directions that the driver said were wrong got there by using those directions that were wrong so sometimes it's and I got granted there's sometimes they're wrong but a lot of times it is the fact that the trip is just not being monitored right. So just use that trip down here. That's why it's in here. Wash for coyotes. And I don't need to jack Clark. Bring me their ears. Uh, I moved three trucks the other day to, so that I could park my truck and pull them up. Every one of those trucks I got into, I needed a tetanus shot after I got out of it. They're so freaking disgusting. If you guys can't clean your spit or whatever's on the dash, or even use a little whisk room, that TC trucking's hiring. We have a nice fleet, really, and we're not we're not taking care of it. And it's just three random trucks I pulled up, and it was every one of those three trucks were disgusting. I wasn't going to say anything because I didn't want to sound like I was bitching, but I, I'm one of the lucky guys that does have a new truck. 
And uh, somebody took it out last <coughs> night. We came back, the door trims tore down, slammed in the door, and now it's all pinched in half, won't reseal. There's shit splattered all over the dashboard, all over the floorboards. There's garbage underneath of the sleeper, all in two days. Yeah, mine was if you can't respect <clears throat> the truck that you're driving, then just don't fucking get in it. Excuse my mouth, but you know that that truck makes my paycheck, that pays my mortgage payment, and if you, you can't respect my truck, then go find a different one to drive. You never understood that. Like this is how we all make our money. If the truck's not working, you sit. Right. You don't make anything. You never understood. But like you guys are in these trucks more than your houses. Is that the truth? Some people more than others. That's your house. Is only like me here. What? We have three houses. 94, 95, and 97. One other thing for you guys. Um, I'm going to have Sierra and Brian help me. We have four gas monitors we will be assigning to each and every one of you. I'll explain that to you guys when I give them to you. How to use them, how to bump test them, how to calibrate them. They're quite expensive. That's why they're going to be assigned to you. Don't leave them in the trucks. Yeah, don't leave them in the trucks. They go with you. Because you're going to sign your life away on these things. But May, May 1st, yeah, it is quite a bit. May 1st, Devon will require it on all their locations. Samson already does, as does Chesapeake. But I will try to be catching up with all you guys. Kim will. We might have supervisors trying to catch up with you also. But we will get them issued to you. Okay. Yeah. No, we just have to buy them. No, they're not MSAs. They're a, a different brand. The, the company we got them through, no, I don't. Um, said they would honor the leaser if they want to buy through them the price we got them for. And you wouldn't need the docking station because you could use ours to bump test them and all of that stuff. They have to be four gas? They have to be four gas. So does anybody who have MSAs got to get their back here? If you have an MSA, I would like that back because we're going to outfit all the water trucks with the MSA because that way Ed has a docking station out there in Gillette that he can catch the water guys with. The Casper water drivers can also uh, use the MSA station back here because those are already been issued to those guys on the MSAs. Yeah. Um, I gotta get going. If you're the individual that did it, this is only intended for you. But if you mess my truck again, and I do, find out who you are.